Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. American Psycho movie thoughts. I will start with whether or not the violence was real. I think the important thing is, excuse me, that it's important to, the, the idea from Ellis's book, from the script by Mary Heron and Guinevere Turner, and the direction of Mary Heron was that the violence was real. It just wasn't always as neat as it looked to Patrick because he never wanted to look anything less than amazing. And I have read some say that it might not have happened, and really it, it might not have, but do note that the three creators definitely would say that it, you know, at least some of the violence was real. Again, as far as, as far as I understand from what I read of them. And yeah, some, some say, well, you know, maybe it's not real. But does it matter if it wasn't real? If, you know, if someone is just imagining doing these awful things, then isn't that just as bad as committing them? And I must answer that with a resounding no. That is getting into the territory of thought crime, of saying that you are not allowed to think up something negative because that is as bad as committing something negative. When there are people who use creative expression, again, I, I use that term rather than, you know, not all of it is going to be fiction and I don't really want to get into the debate of whether or not it's art, and I, I am referring to things that are not necessarily art, but there are a lot of pieces of creative expression that use some violence or the like to, you know, for cathartic purposes. You know, we watch revenge films so that we don't feel so much like taking revenge on the people we feel wronged us. You know, we we play video games to get out this frustrating drive to, you know, we, we humans have gotten to a level where we don't need to use violence. In fact, violence is frowned upon to get through, you know, to become successful. You shouldn't have to be, in fact, if you use violence in today's society, it's probably a bad thing in, in most societies and such, and most professions and such. And certainly it should be very controlled violence. Without our lizard brains evolving to keep up. So our brain still, when we feel anxious, when we feel scared, we, we feel like we have to hurt someone because for, you know, for an almost unimaginable amount of time, that was true. You know, that was, that's what our brain has learned. It hasn't been that long since we stopped. So when something scares us, we feel like we should be violent. And there are a million things that do scare us that we can't do anything about, that we definitely can't reach out and punch. You know, we, we, when we watch the, the news and see that, you know, there's been yet another school shooting, we can't, you know, grab, you know, what's the name, LaPierre? And, you know, by the... This. And, you know, say these people's lives are more important than the, you know, you shouldn't be able to get a gun if you genuinely are, 
you know, close the gun show loophole, so on and so forth. We can't actually do that. So, yeah, it becomes movies or video games or, you know, what have you. And I should also note that it is fairly ironic to... It was a, a positive review that had the, I believe it was IMDb, it's been years, I don't even know if it's still up, but I'm addressing the thought in general. But yeah, if you are saying that this movie does a good job of showing that, you know, imagined violence is just as bad as actual violence, then are you not actually saying that Ellis is a bad person for coming up with all this violence, that he is essentially a mass murderer because he wrote these explicit descriptions of mass murder from the perspective of the mass murder. So, yes, that is the... Yeah, that that's that pretty much covers that. The... Yeah. So, so yes, it, it most definitely matters that, you know, again, as it's presented, the, the way the book and the movie is, it actually happened. Patrick Bateman is a serial killer in those two. And yeah, the you know, the, the ending is kind of yeah, it's it's they didn't mean it to suggest that it was all in Patrick's head, just that it didn't look as good as he thought it did. It doesn't look as good as the way we see it, because what we see is in his head. You know, he doesn't have perfect hair throughout, you know, the, you know, the, the sex. He doesn't, you know, yeah, all these things, you know, and yeah, the, you know, the, the confession is the, you know, yeah, his confession has changed nothing, and behind him the door states this is not an exit. Even the confession was not a way out of this life or his urges, and as he says, the pain is sharp, and I don't want others not to feel pain. In fact, I want to inflict my pain upon others. And that is the the psychology of a lot of serial killers and, you know, sadists that, you know, I feel a lot of pain, so you should too. You know, I'm not getting into like a deeper psycho psychological or, you know, moral argument here, but just at the end of the day, that is where, you know, where he finds himself and where people like him can find themselves. That if something, you know, yeah, if something bothers them, then it must be that, you know, that they have it the worst. You know, note how when recently there were talks about, you know, we have to conserve water, so water can only be for drinking now, you know, and then, you know, these, you know, somewhat more well-off people said, well, what will I water my lawn with? As if the, you know, somehow their lawn, their status symbol is more important than other people's, you know, lives and, and health. I mean, not getting water is one of the most basic, yeah. And, you know, the, the confession, you know, he keeps, you know, he, he refuses to accept it, you know, ultimately insisting, well, I had dinner with him, you know, London 10 days ago, so it can't be. And he says, you know, I don't find this funny anymore, and excuse me, I have to move on. He doesn't, there's no hint that he's going to report it. In fact, he specifically says, you know, it, you know, yeah, I mean, Patrick says, you're my lawyer, what, what do we do next? You know, how do I, you know, I, I know I, you know, I shouldn't go directly to the cops. I should talk to the, my lawyer first, but the lawyer doesn't say, you know, I can get, you know, don't worry. I will figure something out. No, no. He just says, 
you're definitely not right. And you're also not being funny. You know, he doesn't say, like, this should be reported. You know, I mean, he insists, well, you can't have murdered Paul Allen. What about the rest of them? You know, so, so he made up everything because one detail is, you know, and yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's also he's saying to Patrick's face. He, d he clearly doesn't realize that he's talking to Pat Patrick. He also asks about his, like, romantic, you know, partner. And it's like, it's, it's the wrong name again. You know, he, yeah, he thinks he's Davis instead of Patrick. And he, you know, says, you know, Patrick is such a spineless, you know. And he says this in the third person to Patrick. You know, he's not saying you are such a spineless. You know, he's saying it couldn't have been Patrick Bateman as if it's a, you know, a person not involved in the conversation. And, you know, yeah, it, it points to that you can always get away even with murder if you have enough money. And, you know, I find the real estate lady is, you know, the, that scene is also very compelling. That, you know, it again, sadly, some take from it that that means that there were no murders. But, you know, she... You know, they checked it and found that, you know, yeah, it was full of dead people and all this stuff. And the thought is not, this is a matter for the police and we have to, you know, obviously this is, this place needs to be, you know, they, you know, this needs to be investigated. No, no, the thought is if we clean this up especially fast, we can still put this on the market and continue to make money, you know, not risk devaluing this, you know, expensive piece of real estate. So, you know, when, when faced with Patrick, you know, she can tell there's something slightly off, you know, is, you know, at first, can I help you? And she can tell there's something slightly off about him. And he asks, didn't Paul Allen live here? And, you know, she realizes this is the guy, isn't it? And it's not, you know, calling the police. And so, I mean, of course, we don't see what she does after he leaves, but it doesn't appear that she, you know, no, no, it's just leave and don't come back. I don't want you to risk messing up my deal with this place. You know, I can make a lot of money here. You almost cost me all that money leave you know it's and yeah and the you know i guess i'll call her christy since we never find out who her name you know what her name is and i really hope i'm right about the the prostitute on you know that he takes off the street you know pulling up in a limousine as if he drives everywhere in that you know actually I suppose, is it possible that he does? I guess we don't see him, but those are the times that we specifically see him pull up in a limousine that, you know, he's impressing this, you know, but yeah, I'm going to go with Christy. She's not important enough to Patrick to have a name of her own, so we also don't get to hear her name. You know, she's running, I mean, I already tried to keep at hinting level, you know, when the second time he comes up to her, you know, she's like, no, this is, no, you, you really hurt me. I may need surgery. A friend of mine said I should get a lawyer, you know, we're, we're not doing this. And, you know, it's like, you know, okay, it's just, you know, a check. And then she walks out, you know, and walks away and the, the, you know, the limousine falls. And at no point does the limousine driver, you know, say, what are we doing here? For one thing, why are we picking up? A, a prostitute why are we following her after she's walking away you know all this you know I mean this is clearly I mean let's hypothetically say that this is you know let's yeah even even let's say that Bateman didn't have a you know a romantic partner or that the driver doesn't know why are you sir why are we taking someone off the street like this, you know, no disrespect to any sex worker intended for my part, for Patrick's part, 
probably don't I, I don't think from the movies part either but for the movies part either but yeah you know that he's I mean don't don't you want an escort you know don't don't you want to get out of this neighborhood but no it's just, you know and she even says first I'm, I'm not supposed to I'm not supposed to go home to someone's apartment you know that tells her tells you she's on that level you know it's it's maybe on the back of a car or nearby or something but she's not allowed to go you know and yeah you know she she sees all that money and you know walks up and tries to take it and then you know nope in the cab and then or yeah limo and even though she knows what happened the first time she still gets in and you know and when she's in the apartment you know she's she was chatty last time she was like oh you know this is a nice place is it very you know how much did it cost and you know she's trying like you know the the crap what was the I'm gonna go with Lydia I think the escort gang escort girl's name was Lydia you know Lydia she's just confused she's like what what are we, not, are we supposed to go into the bedroom and like I'm here for sex I was told sex with cup with a couple you're the couple I presume aren't we supposed to you know but it's it's you know maybe more of a excuse me yes maybe the you know I mean she's maybe used to having to talk a guy up or you know some kind of like yeah you know she she is yeah you know maybe she every so often you know there's there's a guy there that you know he's he's a little shy or he's you know yeah, you know, or or maybe she's just she's still a little naive, you know, but yeah, and the and also, you know, when she when he tells her, you know, to to get in the bath and she's sitting there, she's enjoying this, you know, was a Chardonnay or something and, uh, you know, and he wants her to wash herself because she's probably dirty, you know. And you know, and to her it's, you know, it's okay, you know, at least at first, but yeah, and she even comes back for for that second time and then and I think you know again this is where I'm gonna sound detached from a storytelling perspective I think it was very good to fit in all of that you know brutality aftermath in that you know I mean I didn't count but there was probably at least half a dozen corpses, some of them fresh and still bleeding, like, you know, like fresh pool of blood, kind of. You know, when she, you know, she's trying to find the right door and she finds bodies, she finds like, you know, yeah, and all of these. And yeah, it, you know, where, where the book could get away with having very explicit details, I mean, I read that there's a one specific scene that involves yeah you know what I think I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna keep then you know you can look up what's what's in the book if you but but yeah you know the the book because it's not visual there is a you you can write some really you know some some really horrifying things but in a movie you know it's limited how much you can show and it will also really excuse me the the you know it's it's relatively little violence that we see on screen there's a lot of hinting and then in that scene a lot of aftermath and that you know that also shows, you know, again, like half a dozen, I mean, that's, isn't that even more than he's even seen, like, talking to in the various, or is it everyone that, 
yeah, but you know, it's a lot and we see some really gruesome stuff and as long as we're not seeing the act, it is more allowed, you know, only seeing the aftermath and yeah, it really, it, it makes it clear just how, you know, because until then we haven't seen that much and I'm not saying that the movie doesn't get across that he's really vicious and, you know, yeah, very, very violent and brutal. But it's the, it's maybe also in part that for a little bit there, it's almost kind of from her perspective. You know, I, I said in the, in the review that we only see what affects Patrick. And in that scene, you know, it affects him because he's chasing her. He's trying to get her, you know, so briefly there we see what she sees. The same as with, with Jean when she opens his date book and such, you know, because these are things that, you know, both of them don't know what he's capable of. And we, the audience, have an idea, but we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen the the scope of it yet. You know, we, we also, with, you know, when he's on the date with Jean, you know, not going to Dorsia afterwards, obviously. You know, we see him testing the weapons, picking which one he wants to use. And that, again, gives us an idea of, you know, he's done this so many times. He's bored with some of these weapons. He's like, do I want to use this one? Mm, use that one. So he's, this one, maybe, you know, it... And it really works. It's And, and it's something that you remember. And just it's a you know like how you know some of these scenes you know do, you know they're not as quite as as proper they don't work out as well as he thinks they do you know and that scene you really do see you know every so often the the film lets us see what it really you know the date you know the, the yeah the date book is another example he, we see what he's actually sitting there drawing you know when you know and it makes sense of course he's you know he you know sometimes he's bored when he's writing down stuff so he doodles that stuff you know and yeah it it's it shows how far he's going and how constant it is you know i mean you maybe don't expect someone else to look into your date book but Nevertheless, and you know, when he's sitting there with Reese Witherspoon at the restaurant, he's also drawing this in full view of anyone who would care to look, you know. But yeah, Christy is running out of the place, you know, she's banging on doors, screaming. The the saw is, you know, he's he's reenacting the chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which we saw him watch earlier, but not so much. He's it's it's gotten old to him. He doesn't even sit down and watch it. He's he's doing exercises while he's, you know, he's just sitting there and it's, you know, he's done it so many times, but he really wants to reenact some of it. But yeah, and, you know, ultimately he even throws it and it lands so perfectly and it's framed by the, the stair, you know, the, the middle of the staircase and the blood pools out very carefully. You know, it's, it is brutal but we don't see the brutality you might say it it looks like i mean if you put some filters over it and you showed it to someone and said this is another dish that's being prepared at the restaurant they might believe you they might say Ooh, well it looks i mean it's spreading very nicely what is that you know but yeah it's you know so it probably isn't quite as nice as he thinks it is but the whole scene, you know, it leads some to believe that it is all in, that that is all in his head because nobody reacts, really. But the idea is that they, they might as well not exist, but they definitely do exist. They, you know, we don't see them. So, it, again, is as if they don't exist. We don't even see someone, like, look up and look at the door and then decide not to. No, no, no. There's no response. It's as if the you know it's as if these people who should have empathy but they're living in a rich building they don't want any trouble they don't want 
Why would they want police up here? What would people think? No, no, no. And essentially, they, they might as well just be these, you know, money-making automatons for all that they care about the well-being of people, even right outside, right outside their door. You know, that, and, and the, you know, I say in the review that it's a film of two halves, and I, it's, the, the second half is necessary. You know, the, it, you know, even after that, it goes even bigger in the climax with, you know, Feed Me a Stray Cat and all this. And it needed to get to that level. You know, the movie starts with this playful intro and we see these, I mean, the first really violent thing he does is a little bit into it. You know, we see him get really out of control before, but then he'll just say something or he'll sit and sweat, you know, giving, getting Lewis's attention. But, you know, it, it escalates there in the second half. And that is very necessary because otherwise it just doesn't have the impact that it needs to. This is not a man who murdered Paul Allen or who, you know, he might be sitting with a little trophy, a lock of hair, you know, or he's, you know, no, no, no. This is a man who brutally murders, you know, several people. And again, I didn't count, but maybe half a dozen bodies, you know, and, you know, and, and Chrissy's also just, I mean, at first, you know, she, she probably wants to get out of there or, or something, or at least maybe, you know, just get dressed or something. And, you know, suddenly she hears the, the moaning turn into screaming and she sees blood you know, on, on the sheet, and then his head comes up, and he's blood, so he's, he bit her, and given that he, yeah, you can probably guess where he bit her, and bit to the point of, of blood, you know, not just bite to where it you know, hurts, no, 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 you know, we're, we're talking, he broke the skin, there's, there's blood coming out from, and she's screaming in pain, and then, you know, Christy runs off, and, yeah, the, I suppose that was about what I wanted to, but, but, yeah, you know, it needs to get as big as it does, and the, the climax is where it really just gets, ridiculous. You know, he's standing here, he's firing this gun at the, the police, you know, and several cop cars, and he blows them both up, and then he looks at the gun, and it's like, because this is something like right out of an action movie, you know, from, from the 80s, you know, or early 90s, but the film is set in the 80s, you know, this, what, this is, this only happens in the movies, I'm, I'm not that you know, this, this, and, and I love the, you know, oh, you know, burning the midnight oil and, you know, guy, you know, mistakes him for someone else. I, also because he looks like he belongs. So the fact that he, you know, he's running into a building just to get away, you know, and the guy thinks, oh, he looks like, you know, he's in a hurry. He probably works here. You know, he can't be doing something wrong. He's well-dressed, you know, and, you know, says, yep, we well, just got to sign in. And then he shoots him, you know, and then he, you know, walks, and then, you know, the, the, what's it, the, the cleaning, you know, shoots him too, because he might find the body, you know, at that point, you know, can't necessarily quite follow all of his logic, but, you know, we're not really necessarily supposed to completely understand every single second, but, yeah, he, yeah, he, and, and then, you know, there's that other guy, and he smiles, and, you know, reaches in, and then it's a pen, and then he signs in, you know, and yeah. But the, yeah. And I, I really like that in, again, from a, I'm going to sound detached, but from a dramatic standpoint, then, then he, during the confession, which, you know, again, it's just fantastic, you know, bails, yeah. And, and, you know, the, the, helicopters already, you know, with a searchlight, so they already know he's there, you know, just the paranoia going, you know, and he says, I've killed a lot of people, you know, 20, maybe 40, you know, it's just, at first, it probably mattered. He counted every single one, and he probably took trophies, and it's like, really, but then, 
after a while, even that got to be monotonous. Even, even this violence that was supposed to wake him up to get him out of this you know, trite existence. Even that has gotten, you know, I mean, he's sitting there. I mean, yeah, he's he's kind of upset, but he's he's not like saying it was definitely 40. It was definitely more than 20, just, you know, 20, maybe 40. I forget, you know, and 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 that's also a good there. He also s says some of the things that he did in the book that he we haven't seen him do in the movie, such as, you know, cannibalism, including was it frying one of the yeah and you know tapes of it some of the girls have seen the tapes and yeah and there's again you know you couldn't visually show that you know unless it would it, it would be a completely different movie under all things and it's still there is still some of the impact we the audience understand that this is real you know but yeah and near the end I think it's Bryce, but I might be, I, let's just say, Bryce, it's only in the deleted scene that he says, you know, I'm leaving, and he jumps down, you know, on the club floor and just walks off, you know, so if, you ha if you've only seen the movie, not the deleted scenes, you don't know what they mean by, you know, it's like, when, where did he go? In either case, we don't know where he went, but, you know, he's back, and one of the others says, he's drinking, what was it? You know, he's he's not drinking alcohol anymore. Can you believe this guy? What? I, what is he under the age? Can you know? Can't he get alcohol anymore? And it's again, like like I say in the in the review. And it, yeah, it's it's you know the sign, but the door behind him. This is not an exit. Where is he gonna go? Yeah, he he left for a while. Now he's back. He's not drinking. He's he he probably realized that you know and he also he does really seem he seems like he means it when in the deleted scene when he says i'm leaving you know and he patrick keeps saying oh do you want to go to another place sure we can do that you know i'll i'll join you there you know but no he yeah he's he's leaving this and yeah and and then he comes back where where else is he going to go that's it's his job it's his field it's you know i mean if he wants to go somewhere and be successful, I mean, that's probably where he's going to end up anyway. So, yeah, he's just back. And he's sitting there and he's saying, look at Reagan. How can he sound so when he knows he's lying? And and literally, I mean, he's Reagan is sitting there talking about the good that maybe came out of the Iran Contra. And it's just... And and this is this is and that isn't even that is not something they made up for the book or the movie. That is that is a clip of Reagan talking about Iran Contra and saying we should probably focus on the good that came out. And just yeah, it's just it's so disgusting that that and yeah, at, at this point Bryce Bryce realizes, but then you know he he asks, you know, yeah, yeah, he, he says, How can he seem so cool, you know, so calm? And then one of the others, you know, McDermott maybe, says, some people are born cool. And Patrick loses it. And, you know, Bryce asks, what are you laughing about? I'm just a happy camper, rocking and rolling. You know, and then, you know, Bryce is laughing as well. So, it, you know, this, it almost seems very temporary. It seems like he's going back into this. But, but yeah, it's, again, you know, there, Patrick, as always, you know, as usual when he's with the, the buddies, he realizes what's going on. He realizes what they're saying to each other. He realizes that Bryce has woken up as well, and he came back to this field. You know, he, he left, which Patrick couldn't have, you know, thought to do, but he, he still came back, and now he... He realizes it, you know, and he's sitting there talking about how can Reagan be so calm after he lied to us, after Iran-Contra, which just, I mean, you know, I, I think Bush was the one who said, you know, America doesn't, you know, negotiate with terrorists, except, of course, if you're Reagan. Just, and, you know, the Gipper, the one that Republicans love, but 
yeah, you know, after that, he's sitting there, and, and Bryce is saying, how can he seem so cool while doing it? And the other guy just says, I don't know, some people just seem calm. And, you know, he's not saying, because that's not what, what, that's not what Bryce is saying. He's not saying he looks really cool. You know, that's what the other guy takes. You know, he says, so the question I was just asked, why, asked is, why does this person seem so calm? I think that some people just seem calm, you know, just, meh, they just, you know, what Bryce is asking is, can you believe that our president lied to us about something like this? And still just, he won't, he doesn't own up to it. He doesn't sit there and say, I'm sorry, this was an awful thing. I wish it hasn't happened, you know. No, he just sits there and Patrick hears that and it's just, it's the same as always. You know, he's just confessed. You know, he said, excuse me, gentlemen, I'll be right back. And he went over and he's hoping that his lawyer will say, we're going to, you know, we're going to see about, you know, whatever. But it's, yeah, you know, we're going to report it, of course, but we're going to, you know, you came to, you you know, you didn't, you weren't like asked to, no, 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 you came of your own free will. So that's going to be extenuating, you know. No, 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 he, you know, he just heard that it doesn't, it's not going to change anything. And he sits down completely dejected. And then he hears this buddy of his who used to be just as vacuous as the others try to start a conversation, try to, because he's where Bateman was. Bateman doesn't usually try to start a conversation anymore. He knows better than that. But Bryce, he just came back and he's like, he's still, you know, he's not drinking. He's still, so, you know, he tries and it's the same. There's still not a conversation there. I also think very compelling when, you know, Bateman, you know, they're, they're at this, you know, there's the, I don't remember the, the name, but there's this punker and, you know, everything, you know, and, you know, he, he explains all of this, you know, very, I mean, it sounds amazing. Yeah, this guy, I mean, you'd almost want this guy for president or something. He has all the right liberal values, you know, all, everything that he says makes so much sense. And, you know, most of them just don't know what to say. And Lewis, of course, you know, very thoughtful, you know. I don't have a lot to say about Lewis and his, but yeah, you know, you can tell he likes Patrick and he, he wants Patrick to like him too. And he thinks that maybe, and maybe Patrick does deep down, you know, maybe he has rep repressed his own homosexuality. I mentioned that in the review. I don't have a lot of thoughts on that, but it definitely is an option, yes. But yeah, you know, the, yeah, he has all these right values. And then a few minutes later, he's stabbing a homeless man to death and stomping his dog to death. And it, you know, and it even starts out, you know, it's this, you're homeless, you're hungry, and you're poor. And, and he even, he, he starts out offering, would you like some, some food, some money? And the guy, it's like, he was expecting just to pass because that's what most people do. You know, they don't even notice that he's there. And I, I do think it's also noteworthy. This is Patrick walking by himself through a dark alley. He was looking for trouble. He wanted to find someone that he could, you know, that he, he could murder or something. Why isn't he in the limo? Why isn't he around the others? You know, what was he doing out there? You know, were they really that close to that bad of a neighborhood in this expensive restaurant? You know, all this stuff. So, yeah, he he was looking for trouble there. And, yeah, it's, it's you know, and, and he, you know, he jokes a little like, you know, you know, were, were you, you know, did you do insider trading or something? You know, and he almost helps him. And then it's this you and I have nothing in common. I'm successful, but you're all the way down here. Just, what, why am I even talking to you? You know, it's, it's this thing of just, you know, and yeah, and, and so he, he stabs him to death, and yeah, and I, uh, apparently in the 
book, he like stabs him in the eye. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it's yeah. He even you know, and he says you know, why don't you get another job? You have a bad attitude, Al. You know, as if it's just that easy. Because that's that's what a lot of rich people think when they you know when they look at poor people. You know, it, if he doesn't if he doesn't like bread, why doesn't he just have you know cupcakes? I, I only heard that you know quote in Danish, so I might be picking a wrong kind of cake. But yeah, you know, it's just this. Is, I'm successful, why aren't you? You know, so, yeah, he doesn't deserve dignity. He doesn't deserve to be treated like a human being. And the, you know, I read that Mary Heron directed, you know, Willem Dafoe, always great, to, maybe as long as he's not playing a campy villain, at least. Although he is still fun in those roles, but yeah. Detective Kimball, you know, to, to, you know, he, you know, to him knowing that, you know, that, that Patrick murdered Paul, not know and not be sure that he, you know, that it was Patrick. And then she edited them together so that we were never sure what he thought about Patrick. And I think that's very effective. Now, I didn't particularly read any, but I can, I can imagine that there are people, I mean, I didn't, I didn't read like every review I've ever written, but yeah, you know, yeah, I can imagine that there are people who feel that the movie, you know, that it's unresolved. I mean, at the end of the movie, you would probably presume he's going to keep doing these violent things or you know maybe it's going to be less for a while maybe it's then going to be more or, you know you don't know exactly what's going to happen but it's pretty clear he's going to keep getting away with it but yeah you know so okay so what you know the 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 resolution to Kimball is that he had an alibi because you know they yeah it was another mistaken identity he you know he was apparently at this other place while Paul Allen's murder so you know Maybe he is dead, but it certainly isn't Patrick, so there's no more to worry about there, you know. And he's just broken up with Reese Witherspoon, and, you know, we don't know where that goes. You know, I again, it might just be a while before the next time he finds, you know. And we don't know what's going to happen with Jean. I mean, if she tells anyone, it's she's going to be punished and no one's going to believe her. You know, they're going to attribute the drawings to someone else if they ever have to explain those away or something. Maybe she quits. I can imagine that. And he gets a new one and treats her about the same, you know. Yeah, I, I don't think that a lot will change after it. But, of course, I mean, the movie, the ending of the movie isn't supposed to say exactly what, you know, we're not supposed to be left with. It's, it's not an... A definitive ending because it's it's more of a question will they ever pay for the awful things that you know will how and when will rich people pay for when they do awful things I'm not saying all rich people do and like I said in the review you know it's not you know Ellis is, Ellis Heron and Turner are not saying that there are Wall Street serial killers they're saying that people who are that wealthy can get away with, you know, for example, cutting costs to where, you know, it would end up killing people. And yeah, when is that going to change? Because that, that hasn't changed. In some ways, it's gotten a lot worse. So yeah, and, and you might say it's like a rallying cry. It's a, a call to action saying we have to make sure that people, you know, again, not necessarily like violent, not revenge, but just we have to make sure to change the laws so that you can't get away with it just because you have a lot of money. But, you know, but yeah, yeah, I think that's more what you're supposed to. And I suppose that more or less covers, and he's going to keep his job, keep working with the others. 
you know, even if Bryce keeps having some kind of, you know, some deep things to say, it's probably going to keep being more or less ignored, you know. Yeah, the... And I, I read a summary of that, you know, sequel set in 2000, you know, when, you know, ending with the movie coming out. It was enjoyable enough to read. I, I'm not really, I'm not really going to comment on it. But, you know, yeah, I mean, if you, if you watch this and you feel like you want to read that, I mean, I think the whole thing, like, detail is still available legally for free. But you can read a summary of it on the IMDb fact. That's where I... Right, but yeah, I'm not really interested in, you know, it wasn't what Ellis wrote, and yeah, I mean, he, he approved the, the things that were written, but yeah, it's, it's a cool enough ad campaign, but it's not, yeah. Now, with this movie, we actually do get what, you know, some fans are clamoring for, which we might not get in, you know, in any movie coming out soon, that is Batman brutally murdering the Joker. And I really shouldn't know this, but this is not the only movie from around this time that has Reese Witherspoon making a scene, being broken up with in a restaurant, and where the idea of her breast size impacting the relationship future is brought up. Why do I know that? Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.